or being taken as a prisoner. He faced all of that for what? To defend his country, to hand, so there's a country left to hand down to future generations of our people. That's why he made that sacrifice. My own great grandfather did that. And I'm sure we could stay here all day listening to tales from your families. It was our families that did this, built this entire country, and it's being taken from us. What do you think if they could come back and see this country? In my opinion, they'd be appalled and sickened of what the politicians and the authorities have done to our country, our beloved Britannia, our England, our Scotland, our Wales, and our old star. We've got no other place on the, under the sun. This is our land. This is our soil. We've got to defend it with every single of our body. And that sums up exactly what we want in Britain first, our growing movement. We want our country back. We want our country back from the corrupt, self-serving career politicians. We want our country back from the Islamic extremists in every town and city of the country, the Muslim grooming gangs, the radicalization that's going on all across the country. We want our country back. We're a minority in London now, thanks to immigration, mass immigration that is increasing all the time. Don't listen to the figures the politicians give you because they're wrong. They talk about net immigration. They talk about the amount of people that are leaving the country versus the amount of people that are coming in. Well, let's just focus for a moment on the amount of people coming in. 850,000 a year. That's nearly a million people a year. Now, fast forward 20 years. And we all know that the immigrant populations here the Muslims, etc., have got a very high birth rate, whereas our people got, prefer to go out and get drunk and to have, you know, careers, etc., etc. But we've lost that touch with, you know, the healthy underpinnings of this world. We need to produce the next generation. And I'm looking specifically at the young men here and the young women. Because you've got to get out there and you've got to produce the next generation of our people. Don't you, do it now, though. Not now. Not right now. <laughs> But if you think about it logically, if you think about your grandparents, how many kids and children they had compared to how many you've got, I bet there's a vast, vast difference. And if we don't produce the next generation of our people, there won't be a Britain left. Our country is facing extinction. We got 75% of our laws made by the European Union, mass immigration, we've seen the chaos in Calais, we've seen the poor truckers at Dover, with the immigrants coming out of their lorries. It's an invasion, okay? They might not be carrying guns, they might not have uniforms, but it's an invasion of our sovereign territory and we have got to stop it, otherwise we will become a minority in our own country. As I said, Britain first, we chose that name specifically because it sums up in just one single term what we stand for. Britain first, not immigration first, not foreigners first, not Brussels first or the European Union. No, we want to put our people first. And that is, that's the DNA that runs through everything in this movement. We want to restore pride to our people. How many people here I've got a really deep and widespread understanding of our own history in these islands. Because of the modern education system where young men can come out, young women, young men, the next generation can come out not reading, not being able to write properly, don't know anything about their own past, what has happened, what our people have been through just to survive. The reason they do that, because if you don't know what's going on in your country and you've got no sense of pride, then you're not going to lift a finger to stop it being taken from us. We want to restore pride back to our people and that runs through absolutely everything. We've all heard the term political correctness. That political correctness is making our people second class citizens in our own country. How many you know, times in the newspapers do we keep reading about Christmas is banned? or a war veteran has been kicked out his home. You know, this country is going to the dogs and Britain first is more than just a political party. It's a declaration of war to save our people. It's a rallying call, okay, for our people 
It's a movement. Our people can join and fight back against what's happening in this country. It's a declaration of war against the corrupt, self-serving career politicians. It's a declaration of war against everyone in this country who seeks to undermine the existence and the survival of our people. Britain First is about doing something. We're not the type of people to sit on our backsides and just whinge and moan. That's why we're here today. And you've probably seen all the videos where Jada is confronting terrorists, she's being arrested, she's chasing them down the road, you know. <laughs> I've been arrested by SO15 Counterterrorism Command, every police force in the South East, yeah. simply for harassing and confronting terrorists, hate preachers, Islamic extremists, okay? We go into the most dangerous areas, such as Brick Lane in East London, we tackle all the top hate preachers, that's what we do. And we come to towns like Luton, where there is developing a kind of unspoken mini caliphate where the Muslims, as long as they say we're upset, then everyone else gets told they're not allowed. That's what situation was happening in this country. Britain first, as I said, is more than a political party, okay? It's a movement. It's a gigantic family that anyone in this country who's loyal to this country can join. We are family. I consider every single person in front of me to be my own flesh and blood, just as much as my brothers and sisters and my father and mother. Okay, you're as dear to me as that. That's the difference between us and the traitors, is that we're prepared to die. We're prepared to go to hell and back for what would be complete strangers. But we know they're not complete strangers because they're British. That means they're family to us. Hear, hear. Yeah. This town has got a shameful record of collaboration and appeasement of militant Islam. Jada went through all that list earlier. You've seen what's going on. But I can tell you now, we will be coming back to Luton at some point in the future because even though the Muslims might get upset and might be a bit sensitive, according to the police, there's tens of thousands of English people in this town who deserve to be heard, and that is what we will do. We will give them a voice in their own town. The police ignore them. The Labour Council ignores them. Where do they turn? They turn to Britain first. That's why we exist, because we defend our own people regardless of the cost. And quite frankly, no one is going to stop me and no one is going to stop Jada. No one's going to stop us from coming to one of our own towns for no good reason. Never! So my message to the police is, you can shove your injunctions, you can shove your restrictions, we will not be silenced, we will be back, and we will put our own people first in our own country! Thank you very much! Right. Now, usually, when we're in this situation, we finish the rally and we march back the same route, back to where we started. For some strange reason, the police want to parade us past the unwashed, hippie, middle-class, treacherous bastards up there. Everyone hold your breath. Fuck it. Oh, okay, the police have just changed their mind again. We're going that way. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for coming. Who has come here from Scotland? Hands up. Yeah. I know there's Where some. Are you? Hey. Yeah. We got some guys that come from Scotland. There you go. <laughs> Hands up if you've come from Wales. There they are. Welsh flag over there. <laughs> Hands up if you've come from Northern England. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A bit more noise. They're about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite sensitive, you guys from up north, aren't you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> if you've come from Luton, hands up and give us a roar! Yay! What about the South West? Give us a roar! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you for coming, anyhow. All those from the South East, give us a roar! Yay! <laughs> oh, I do apologise. How about the Midlands? Everyone from the Midlands? 
The whole country is represented here, the best our country has to offer, and we will never surrender, we will never back down, we will fight for our country no matter what. They will not take it from us while there is a single breath of oxygen left in our lungs until the last man standing. God save the Queen, God save Britannia! <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go back. The police are going to direct us. God save the Queen!